Greetings. Welcome one and all to today's service. For those of you dialing in by telephone and can't see me, I'm Deacon Jenny Jones, and it's great that you've been able to join us as well. It's always good to gather together to worship our Lord and Saviour. Let's come to God in prayer. Glorious God, who created all things, who has the power over all things. We are amazed that you know and love each one of us. You designed the universe and everything we have yet to discover. And still you hear our prayers. Your spirit upholds us. Your grace enfolds us and your mercy frees us from our selfish ways. Lord, we long to see more of your kingdom. We yearn to understand and know you better. We ache to see others know your salvation. Accept our worship. Receive our prayers. Amen. We sing together the great hymn of praise, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, which is number 548 in Singing the Faith, if you're using a hymn book. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Breathe. 
1 Thessalonians 5, 14-24 Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he calls you is faithful. Today is a day of celebration. It's January. It's cold. We're in the middle of a pandemic. So what have we got to celebrate? Well, I think we've got loads to celebrate because we've got so much to give thanks to God for. God is with us wherever we are. And God rejoices in each one of us, however hard and limited we find that at the moment. I think that's a good enough reason for a celebration. And hopefully it won't be too long before we can join together and once again celebrate as one. Celebrate God's goodness to each one of us. Perhaps we might even blow up a few balloons and have a bit of a party. I'm told that some of the churches in this circuit lay on a pretty good buffet. But as we know, life isn't much of a party at the moment. Sometimes it feels really tough. I'm sure we've all had moments when we struggle to understand why life has turned out to be so hard. Or even why at times it seems just so mundane. We can't always be partying, even though we've received the best gift in the world. The knowledge that God loves us and that Jesus died and rose again so that we can be reconciled to God and will be in his presence forevermore. The Bible doesn't tell us that a life committed to Christ will be easy. It says that Christ will give us the strength to cope in the hard times and the hope that things will be better. So this morning, I want us to dip into our imagination and imagine we're going on a journey, perhaps going on holiday somewhere. Where would you choose? I think I'd like to go at this moment to somewhere hot and sunny with lots of open spaces, perhaps a mountain in the background. And of course, there'd need to be lots of good food. And for me, I would always like a big swimming pool. I'm well past the age when a, a bikini and flip flops was all I'd need to pack. But I think I'd put my swimming costume and my baggy shirt, a pair of shorts and my walking boots, and of course, lots of suntan cream. But even though we can't leave our homes at the moment, we are still on a journey, our journey with Christ. Let's imagine we're packing our suitcase for that journey. What would we pack in order to keep our faith strong? What should we put in our suitcase to keep away the creepers, those things that will tempt us away from God? What should we pack to encourage us in our Christian journey when things get tough? Today's reading was written to encourage the Christians in Thessalonica who were struggling and suffering persecution. But they're wonderful words of encouragement for us all as we continue on our Christian journey. 
through the high peaks of the great times when we know God surrounding us. And again, into the troughs of life when it, life isn't so good. What did Paul suggest we put into our suitcases? Always be joyful, never stop praying. I like to think that we're encouraged to pray constantly because prayer can help us to develop deeper insights into God's ways. In prayer, we learn to listen to God and discover the dimensions of love that have saved us from the constantly shifting sands that are in our human nature. In prayer and praise, we are constantly drawn into the depth and mystery of understanding ourselves within the love of God. Prayer should definitely be packed into our suitcase. The next thing that Paul suggests we put into our suitcase is be thankful in all circumstances. Paul had suffered for his faith, so why would he say, be saying, give us thanks in all circumstances? Surely he doesn't really expect us to give thanks for bad things, for the things that hurt us and damage us. I don't think that is what he means. He's not asking us to give thanks for all things. But in, in faith, we should try to find the grace to give thanks in all things. There's a subtle difference. We can give thanks to God for his presence strengthening us to cope. We can give thanks to God for the vaccines and medicines which we hope will soon see an easing of our current pandemic. We can give thanks that modern communications means that we can speak and see our family via the internet, for example. We're not giving thanks for the difficult but we're giving thanks in them. Giving thanks is another important idea to pack into our suitcase for our journey with Christ. The suitcase is getting a bit heavier now, but we still have a few more things we need to put in it. Paul tells us to root ourselves in God and in the scriptures. Do not stifle the spirit. Do not scoff at the words of the prophets. Test everything and hold fast to what is good. When times are tough, when life is dry, don't turn away from God. No, do the opposite. Turn towards God. Allow God to refill you with the spirit. Let the words of scripture inspire you again. Let them show you how God has been at work throughout all generations, through all times, good and bad. When times are good, our relationship with God can feel completely solid. But compared to God's faithfulness to us, our faithfulness to God can sometimes be incredibly fragile. We need to nurture the spirit. We need to test what we feel or what someone has said to us. We need to test that against scripture and tradition. The phrase, what would Jesus do, may seem a little hackneyed, but I find it a good rule and I'm not sure how I should be acting. But it is really important to go back to the Bible when asking what would Jesus do? Because sometimes we can be surprised. Jesus was never wishy-washy. Jesus got angry. Jesus protested. Jesus challenged authority. Jesus loved the unlovable. Jesus accepted the journey God had prepared for him with all the trials and rejection and difficulties that involved. And throughout that journey, Jesus rejoiced, prayed, tested the spirit, 
returned to scriptures, quoted the prophet. Jesus held fast to what was good and rejected evil. As always, Jesus is the model by which we should try, we should try to copy. So today, we may not be able to party, but let us all recommit ourselves to God. Let us reflect on the suitcases we carry, our toolbox for spiritual living that will sustain us on our journey through these hard times so that we can have the hope of the words of the final two verses of our reason, reading. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen for he who calls you is faithful. Each step of our journey in life is a step with God. But remember, we have our never-ending source of sustenance in our bag. Whatever we do, wherever we go, however tough life is, God is with us. The light of God, the love of God, the power of God are with us all. The one who called you is completely dependable, completely faithful. Amen. Now, because when you are watching this, I will have only just returned from a week's annual leave, I've recorded this service in advance. And therefore, as we turn to our prayers, I admit I may not have included in them any events that have arisen this week. The inauguration of President Biden should have happened by now, but I cannot anticipate how that proceeded following recent events in Washington. If there are gaps in the contents of my prayers, I apologise. And I ask you please to pray your own prayers once we've finished. Let us pray. Loving and living God, we hold before you the divisions in your world where people won't listen to one another, won't hear truth and only act in their own interests. We see it in our own country. We see it across the world. We pray that our words and actions do not add to those divisions. And that in your grace, we learn to love our neighbours and those we disagree with. And together, we offer your hand of hospitality, bringing peace to troubled circumstances. We pray for the United States of America and its new president. May this country and its people become truly united. And may the new president find ways to reconcile the splits within his country. We pray for our own government as it deals with the pandemic and ongoing Brexit issues. We pray for honesty and fairness in their decision making and that the vulnerable and needy are high on their agenda in their policy making. We pray for all those working in the NHS and other frontline services. We thank you for their sacrifice and dedication. And we pray especially for the families of those who, through their, that dedication, have lost their loved ones to this virus. We pray for all that are being treated for COVID-19. And for those who are ill, but have had their treatment delayed because there is no room in the hospitals. 
May they feel your peace-filled healing hands on them. And may your strength help them through their trials. Lord, you healed of old. Bring healing to your world. Whether that healing is of body or mind, we pray in faith to you. And where it is not your will to heal, we pray that your peace may be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. We sing again. Hymn number 611 in Singing the Faith. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. And as we sing it, reflect on the words of the second verse. We are pilgrims on a journey and companions on a road. We are hell here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. Brother, sister, let me serve you Let me be as Christ to you Pray that I may have the grace to Let you be my servant May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>